nights away from no mercy in Baltimore, but tonight we make a pit stop in Providence, Rhode Island, and we're not wasting any time. Let's get things down to ringside and kick off another edition of Friday Night Smackdown. The following contest is scheduled for one fall, making his way to the ring, accompanied by Chad Gable, representing the Alpha Academy from Superior, Wisconsin. Weighing in at 330 pounds, Otis! It's gonna be an action-packed night here in Providence, Rhode Island in your main event. The Rated R Superstar Edge back in action for the first time since SummerSlam as he goes one-on-one -on -one with the man who screwed over both AJ Styles and Randy Orton last week, Austin Theory. Also signed tonight on SmackDown, the United States Champion Cody Rhodes set to go one-on-one -on -one with the master of the 619, Rey Mysterio. Two fan favorites set to meet 1v1 later tonight in the middle of Providence, Rhode Island. We are eight nights away from the SmackDown exclusive live premiere event next Saturday night, 5 p.m. Eastern time. We are heading to Baltimore for no mercy. But tonight, the action is going to be ever so fire inside of the ring. And we kick things off with Alpha Academy's Otis looking to build some momentum for his master, Chad Gable, as he has got a meeting with Santos Escobar coming up in just eight nights for that prestigious Cruiserweight Championship of the World. Legado El Fantasma from Mexico City, Mexico, weighing in at 200 pounds, the WWE Cruiserweight Champion, Santos Escobar. Santos Escobar has held the gold since June, but will eight nights from tonight be the expiration date? As the Emperor of Lucha Libre, Santos Escobar defends the Cruiserweight title against Alpha Academy's master, Chad Gable. Over the last couple of weeks, Chad Gable's been picking up some steam here on Friday Night SmackDown. You see those two men accompanying Santos Escobar down to ringside. Oh, wait a, wait a minute. Austin Theory in the backstage area ambushing the Rated R Superstar Edge. Well, these two men, they're set to go one-on-one -on -one in your main event tonight. But remember the bad blood between Theory and Edge. Just a few weeks before SummerSlam, Edge pinned Austin Theory in the middle of the ring on SmackDown, and Theory blames Edge for derailing his momentum before his world title matchup. Well, these two are set to meet later tonight, but it looks like Austin Theory is trying to get the upper hand earlier in the evening tonight in Providence. We need to get some help back there, separate these two men. It does not look like this is a, a similar brawl. This looks like a well-boiled attack by Austin Theory. And through the table goes the Rated R Superstar. Down to the concrete. Austin Theory just laid out edge in the backstage area. There's a lot of writing on what just happened. Those two men are supposed to meet later tonight here in Providence on SmackDown, but... We're going to have to wait to see what happens. If Edge is gonna, even going to be able to compete, we got to refocus. We're kicking things off tonight with Otis versus Santos Escobar, the Cruiserweight Champion of the World. And as Otis starts to pick up steam, as we are about to mention before, we are so vastly interrupted by Austin Theory's ambush over our Edge. But in recent weeks here on SmackDown, Chad Gable has defeated not only Cruz Del Toro, but also Joaquin Wilde of Legado Del Fantasma. That is what earned Chad Gable his Cruiserweight Championship match in eight nights. But can he go three for three? Can he take down the Emperor of Lucha Libre and Santos Escobar? We will find out in Baltimore. Tonight, Santos Escobar, no Cruiserweight challenge ahead of him. He's got the big man, the heavyweight Otis. And you see Legado Del Fantasma trying to aid their leader to victory tonight, but Otis did his homework on the Cruiserweight Champion and is coming to play. Otis not looking to derail the momentum that Chad Gable has put on the tracks in recent weeks. Just eight nights away from that big time Cruiserweight Championship match. Neither man, meaning Chad Gable or Santos Escobar, looking to see their momentum go up in smoke. Escobar in the midst of his third Cruiserweight Championship reign. Spent the first half of 2023 back and forth with the man we will see in action later tonight, that being Rey Mysterio. And Escobar winning the championship back in May. 
the Vengeance pay-per-view, retaining it back in June at King of the Ring in that two and a three falls Extreme Lucha Rules match over Rey Mysterio. Santos Escobar now. Looking to retain the title in eight nights as he comes over the top rope with the crossbody. All oh, his weight crashing down on the big man at ringside. The last time Escobar successfully defended that title, the final Friday Night Smackdown before Money in the Bank in July, when he defeated the Irish ace J.D. McDonough. A hell of a matchup here on SmackDown. But ever since then, the Cruiserweight division, the majority of it's been locked up in the Cruiserweight Classic, which continues to progress Saturday after Saturday. Of course, that tournament going to continue tomorrow with the final first-round matches. But Escobar's kind of been sitting back, waiting to see who's going to win that tournament. All in the meantime, Chad Gable has stepped up as a man vying for the Cruiserweight Championship of the world. Or oh, amazing to be seeing what's going to happen as Santos once again taking Otis to the outside here. And full head of steam like a lawn dart shot out of a cannon. Tope Suicida through the ropes and down goes Otis at ringside. Certainly a contrast of styles here tonight and referee better keep his eye on Joaquin Wilde. Obviously the numbers game in the corner of Legato Del Fantasma tonight. Escobar dropping that leg. Will it be enough? Gets the two, but the big man powers out and gets the kick out as this opening matchup progresses here tonight on SmackDown. And don't forget, tomorrow afternoon, 3 p.m. Eastern time, we continue the Cruiserweight Classic Tournament in Manhattan, New York, Hammerstein Ballroom. The final two first-round matches coming your way tomorrow afternoon. J.D. McDonough set to battle Tyler Breeze and Axiom set to battle Monday Night Rolls. Ilya Dragunov. That's all coming your way tomorrow, live at 3 p.m. Eastern time. Santos Escobar right now here on SmackDown, almost eliminating Otis from competition. And now off the top with the splash, and I think that's going to be all she wrote. No, oh, only a one count there. Otis came to play tonight. Tough as nails, big singles matchup for Otis tonight, rare occurrence. Usually see Otis in the midst of tag team action alongside Chad Gable. Tonight is all about momentum as we are eight nights away from the SmackDown exclusive live premiere event. Live from Baltimore, it is no mercy. And Santos Escobar is down and out. And I think Otis is about to show Santos absolutely no mercy here tonight. Caterpillar elbow. What a maneuver. Oh, wait a minute here. Otis going for the pinfall, but the referee's got his back turned thanks to the antics of Legato Del Fantasma. Now into the cover. And Santos Escobar gets the shoulder up, and I got a feeling if it weren't for Cruz Del Toro and Joaquin Wilde at ringside, that Otis might have just walked away with a victory and a poison run by Santos Escobar. Oh, well, wait a minute here. Eye for an eye. Chad Gable not afraid of a little underhanded tactic every now and then. All's fair in love and war. Well, Legato Del Fantasma did moments ago. Master Gable has been before. Very awesome matchup to kick things off tonight here on SmackDown. This is going to be a loaded night of action inside of that ring. As tensions are running high in the SmackDown locker room on the way to no mercy. Santos Escobar's got Otis rarely on spaghetti legs. And there's the big man. Look at that muscling over. The leader of Legato Del Fantasma not going to allow him to tackle him down to the ground. And look at the power on display. And down goes the Cruiserweight Champion. You know, it's been some time since Santos Escobar has fought really anybody outside of the Cruiserweight division. So this is certainly going to be a tough battle here tonight as we are witnessing. Escobar may be a little thrown off his game. Not used to the power on display by Otis. He swings him out with that maneuver. Escobar on the run to Legado del Fantasma territory, but Otis better watch because he is in said enemy territory here. And now at ringside, powering him up, and Santos with the counter and muscles Otis down to the ground. Enough to at least knock him down for the moment. And now Escobar, the Cruiserweight champion's wheels are spinning. They don't call him the Emperor of Lucha Libre for nothing. Springboard, beautiful moonsault to the outside. You know, one thing about really both sides of the ring tonight and Legato Del Fantasma and Alpha Academy is that even though these two units have been known to use an underhanded tactic or two, these are two teams, two factions 
that over the last few months have really started to gain popularity with the WWE Universe. The respect is there for the talents of all of these men. And I don't know what Escobar has got in mind right here. Trying to muscle Otis up. A rare occurrence. Well, that's how rare it is. Not able to hold it. And Otis with the power bomb. We are witnessing a born burner tonight between the Cruiserweight Champion and one half of Alpha Academy. Wait a minute, counter. What a phantom driver heard around the world. Momentum swings back in the corner of Legato del Fantasma tonight. One hell of a contest to kick things off here on SmackDown. Chad Gable scored two victories over Cruz del Toro and Joaquin Wilde. Santos beat Otis tonight, but who is gonna win when it matters at eight nights in Baltimore? Here is your winner, Santos Escobar. The Emperor of Lucha Libre, the Master of Alpha Academy, one on one for the Cruiserweight Championship at no mercy. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're coming your way with breaking news. Originally scheduled Austin Theory versus Edge, but after the ambush moments ago, with Austin Theory putting Edge through that table in the backstage area, Edge unfortunately not able to compete tonight. The phenomenal AJ Styles will fill the shoes, and after what happened last week, Austin Theory interrupting that number one contenders match between AJ Styles and Randy Orton, there's a lot of bad blood between these two superstars. A new main event signed Styles and Theory one-on-one -on -one later tonight on SmackDown. But speaking of AJ Styles, his OC brethren, Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson in the flesh for the first time since SummerSlam. But it's the big LG. Luke Gallows has got his hands full with a Nigerian giant Omos who certainly was busy here on SmackDown seven nights ago and has got a new target in the one and only Ricochet. And his opponent from Lagos, Nigeria, weighing in at 400 pounds, the Nigerian Giant Omas! We're going to take you back to seven nights ago here on SmackDown. Ricochet moments after coming up short in a one-on-one -on -one contest against Braun Breaker, ambushed at ringside by the Nigerian Giant Omas. And of course, this is stemming after these two men went one-on-one -on -one several weeks ago here on SmackDown and Ricochet knocked off Omos. Clearly that loss has not sat well with Omos. The attack last week has led to this match being signed eight nights from tonight at no mercy. The Nigerian giant Omos set for a rematch against the one and only Ricochet. David vs. Goliath once more. It's one thing for Ricochet to strike while the iron's hot. But will Lightning strike in the same spot? Will he be able to defeat Omos eight nights from this evening at No Mercy? We will find out next weekend in Baltimore. But as for tonight, very few men can look eye to eye with the Nigerian giant Omos, but the big LG Luke Gallows at least gonna give it a go. And here we are. We got David versus Goliath at No Mercy, but tonight it's King Kong versus Godzilla. Luke Gallows, Omos. This is of course coming after Gallows and Anderson came up short in a possible match of the year candidate just a few weeks ago at SummerSlam coming up short in their pursuit of the world tag team titles. An opportunity I'm sure they're going to fight to earn once again. Right now Luke Gallo's singles competition tonight. Rare occurrence as he's got Omos and we talked about this recently here on SmackDown. It's one thing to knock Omos off its feet. It's a whole nother thing to keep him there. Ricochet was somehow able to pull it off a few weeks ago. Will Luke Gallows be able to suffer the same fate tonight. Meanwhile, this thing getting taken to the outside. This is the last place you want to be. We just called called these two men Godzilla and King Kong moments ago here at ringsides like they're fighting in the streets of New York City and absolute carnage is about to erupt. You notice how Luke Gallows is just throwing shot after shot with Omos and Omos is barely budging and just ragdolled. You see how impressive that is. Omos ragdolling the man with the size and strength of Luke Gallows into the, into the barricade at ringside. Absolutely insane. Gallows trying to steal a victory here. And again, as we mentioned, it's one thing to knock Omos down. It's a whole other thing to keep him there. 
And we talked about it last week, but Ricochet had a busy couple of weeks here on SmackDown as well as the Cruiserweight Classic. Last week, one-on-one -on -one with Braun Breaker, then competed in the CWC, but this might be his fate. Eight nights from tonight at No Mercy, a choke slam by the Nigerian Giant. Thanks for coming, Luke Gallows. Wow. Absolutely dominating when he needs to be. The Nigerian Giant Omos is a one in a million kind of talent, and that is just one of the reasons why. Here is your winner, the Nigerian Giant Omos. Omos is looking for his payback. The one and only Ricochet looking to go two for two. They're gonna run things back in Baltimore at no mercy. Over the last three weeks, we have witnessed the first round of the Cruiserweight Classic play out, but we are back tomorrow afternoon, 3 p.m. Eastern time for the final first round matches in the CWC coming your way in less than 24 hours. It is going to be the Irish ace, J.D. McDonough, battling Prince Pretty, Tyler Breeze, contrast to Styles. These two men go one-on-one -on -one in the first round of the CWC. Also coming your way at 3 p.m. Eastern time tomorrow. SmackDown's Axiom all the way from Spain. Battles Monday Night Rolls. Ilya Dragunov all the way from Russia. It's an international battle. Dragunov and Axiom. JD McDonough and Tyler Breeze. The final two first round matches in the Cruiserweight Classic Tournament tomorrow afternoon. Live at 3 p.m. Eastern time for Manhattan, New York in the Hammerstein Ballroom. Well, we told you the action was going to be hot and heavy tonight here in Providence, Rhode Island. And here comes the United States champion. The man with the red, white, blue, and most importantly, the gold. The American Nightmare, Cody Rhodes, has got a high profile matchup set for him in eight nights at no mercy. But Cody Rhodes is a fighting champion title on the line or not tonight he's gonna give it it all in this battle against the hall of famer Rey mysterio tonight on smackdown the following is scheduled for one fall making his way to the ring from atlanta georgia weighing in at 220 pounds that wwe United States Champion, the American Nightmare, Cody Rhodes. Cody Rhodes accomplished what no other man has been able to back at SummerSlam, handing the ring general Gunther his very first loss here on SmackDown, all in the means of becoming the United States Heavyweight Champion. Cody already with a successful defense under his belt, retaining the gold against Ricochet two weeks ago here on SmackDown, but it's what happened moments after the bell that told the story and what has led Cody Rhodes to eight nights from tonight when he defends his championship one-on-one -on -one against the man dubbing himself meaner than evil, Braun Breaker. But Cody Rhodes is no stranger to his opponent tonight. These two men have had battles years ago. Respect is there, but competition is at its highest here on Friday nights. And the master of the 619, Rey Mysterio, is looking to seize this opportunity against the United States champion live tonight here on SmackDown. And his opponent from San Diego, California, weighing in at 175 pounds, Rey As we mentioned, coming up at No Mercy, eight nights from this evening, meaner than evil, Braun Breaker set to go one-on-one -on -one for the first time ever against the American Nightmare, Cody Rhodes. The United States Championship is up for grabs. And remember how we got here. Just two weeks ago, Braun Breaker ambushing Cody, dead center of the canvas, leaving him laying after a shot over the dome with his very own United States title. But here we go tonight on SmackDown, Rey Mysterio, Cody Rhodes one-on-one -on -one. this is Rey Mysterio's first time in action since coming up short in the first round of the Cruiserweight Classic to his own son Dominic 
Dominic will meet Johnny Gargano in just a number of weeks in the quarterfinals of the CWC. But Rey Mysterio hot out of the gate all over the United States champion. As we mentioned, ton of respect there between Cody and Ray, but tonight not about the respect. Mysterio sees the opportunity, one-on-one -on -one with the United States champion. A win over Cody could easily put Ray in line for a future shot at the gold. Cody Rhodes with no answer thus far. Ray Mysterio is looking good, looking motivated in this match. Two fan favorites clashing in the midst of this Friday night SmackDown edition from Providence. Just eight nights from no mercy. Will be a SmackDown exclusive live premiere event. Gonna be at 5 p.m. Eastern time next Saturday night. And if Cody Rose doesn't pick up some steam, he may be going into no mercy with a big time L in the loss column. Mysterio all over the American Nightmare. Now what? Scale on the ropes, drop kick, knocks the United States champion off his feet. Rey Mysterio came to play tonight. And I don't think Cody expected this fight out of the I was about to say challenger, but of course the championship not on the line tonight, but certainly an opportunity in the near future could be. There's Cody knocking Ray off his feet and out dropping the elbow. Oh, wait a minute. Cody Rhodes. Cody Rhodes going for the vertebrae early on. Cody Rhodes did not come for the song and dance. He came for the finish. And Cody, crossroads. Rey Mysterio came out swinging, but Cody Rhodes may have hit the home run. And that'll do it. What a victory by Cody Rhodes tonight here on SmackDown. Co oh, wait a minute. Wait just a second. Meaner than evil, Braun Breaker, the number one contender, walking his way to the top of the stage and sending a message to Cody Rhodes that Braun Breaker is coming for the red, white, blue, and gold. Eight nights from tonight in Baltimore at No Mercy. It is the SmackDown exclusive live premiere event Saturday night. September the 16th in Baltimore, 5 p.m. Eastern time. We're coming your way with No Mercy. And already signed for the No Mercy event. There is going to be absolutely no mercy shown between these two former best friends, the EST Bianca Belair and the ballsy badass Shotzi. Bad blood, tensions are rising, but who will come out on top in eight nights? As we saw sign for No Mercy, it is a David vs. Goliath rematch. The Nigerian Giant Omas set to battle the human highlight reel Ricochet. Will Lightning strike, strike twice? Will Ricochet pick up the victory in Baltimore? Cruiserweight Championship is on the line. Santos Escobar holding his hand raised high earlier tonight, but will that be the same result when he meets Master Chad Gable in just eight nights for the Cruiserweight Championship? Cody Rhodes successful moments ago, but will he be successful when he defends the United States Championship one-on-one -on -one with the number one contender, Ron Breaker. Breaker throughout the gauntlet. Cody answers the call for the United States title. And speaking of championships, the WWE Women's title is on the line. Candice LeRae has been itching for this rematch since her return in June. She earned it in the eight-woman battle royal, but can she take down the Queen of Spades one-on-one -on -one for the WWE Women's Championship. All that and more coming your way in just eight nights at No Mercy. But speaking of the Women's Champion, Shayna Baszler is live and in living color. The following contest is scheduled for one fall. Making her way to the ring from Sioux Falls, South Dakota. The Queen of Spades, Shayna Baszler, you are looking at a woman who not only holds the gold, the WWE Women's Championship, but Shayna Baszler has not lost a match here in the WWE in over six months. And the biggest win, without a doubt, coming in that what was being called the money fight against the Empress of Tomorrow, Asuka, just a few weeks ago in Levi Stadium at SummerSlam, quite possibly the women's match of the year here in the WWE. But Shayna Baszler now looks ahead to her next challenge, somebody who she's got some history with. 
and Candice LeRae. And not only history, but a woman she defeated, not without an asterisk. We'll talk all about it and the history between Baszler and Candice LeRae in moments as Indy Hartwell makes her way down the aisle. And accompanied by Candice LeRae, representing the way from Melbourne, Australia, Indy Hartwell. Well, Indy Hartwell's got her own issues, her own history with Shayna Baszler dating back to March and April here on SmackDown. Indy had a couple of contests with Shane. Unfortunately, came up short in every single one of them. Indy Hartwell became a stepping stone in the re-emergence, if you will, of Shayna Baszler here on SmackDown. So looking to get back a victory tonight over the champion and certainly bring some momentum to her and Candice LeRae's corner ahead of Candice's big-time opportunity at no mercy. As we mentioned, the history between Candice LeRae and Shayna Baszler it was the first SmackDown after the King of the Ring live premiere event in June, just days removed from Shayna becoming the women's champion after she defeated Liv Morgan. She threw out an open challenge here on SmackDown, a returning Candice LeRae answered the call. And the interesting factor on that night was of course Baszler walked away, still the women's champion, but she did it via countout. Wasn't able to pin Candice LeRae, wasn't able to get her to tap out. Candice LeRae on Barry Many occasions in that matchup was half a second away from leaving the WWE Women's Champion. Gotta wonder if that is playing into the psyche of Shayna Baszler, knowing she basically just survived Candice LeRae a few months ago here on SmackDown. You gotta wonder if even though Shayna technically won the match, if Candice feels that she's got the Queen of Spades number. All remains to be seen. History is there. Two incredible talents. Candice LeRae absolutely earning her opportunity two weeks ago here on SmackDown. Outlasting seven other women in the over-the-top rope battle royal came down to Candice and Bianca Belair. Candice LeRae becoming the number one contender. Meanwhile, Shayna Baszler over the last few months has just been getting better and better as we see right there. And a spear for good measures. And Shayna looking to make quick work of Indy Hartwell here on SmackDown, not just yet. As we mentioned, Baszler, some of her recent victories. You go back to June, a King of the Ring, where she originally won the Women's Championship, tapping out Liv Morgan. She did it again at Money in the Bank in the rematch in July, and then all roads led to her money fight with the Empress of Tomorrow, Asuka, just a several weeks ago at SummerSlam, and Baszler tapping out of all women, the Empress of Tomorrow, that being Asuka, somebody who in herself has tapped out so many superstars inside of that ring. Baszler continues to get better and better, match after match, week after week, month after month. We are witnessing domination firsthand here in the WWE by the women's champion and Shayna Baszler. Will that dominance continue here tonight? Will it continue in eight nights at no mercy? Or is the woman at ringside supporting her tag team partner in Indy Hartwell, that being Candice LeRae, does she have the number of the Queen of Spades? And will she be leaving with the championship? Or oh, remains to be seen, Indy Hartwell going to the outside, and I think we know what she's got in mind. Picture perfect bullet point landing. Drop kick to Shayna Baszler, and she almost had her there. Got the two count. Man, Indy Hartwell's got one of the most beautifully delivered drop kicks in the business. A lot of agility. Super impressive is the Australian woman herself and Indy Hartwell. Former tag team champions are Indy and Candice. Candice looking for that singles gold in eight nights. Indy just looking for the victory. It's an interesting situation as well, because similar to how we were discussing Rey Mysterio moments ago, if he were to defeat Cody Rhodes, which obviously came up short, but if he were to get that victory, could have easily put him in line for a future United States Championship opportunity. You gotta wonder if the same goes for Indy Hartwell tonight. If she can defeat Shayna Baszler, will Indy be waiting in the win for whoever leaves no mercy as the champion? And after that crossbody, Indy Hartwell is certainly making a convincing argument that she can keep down the Queen of Spades tonight. She's just got to keep the foot on the gas pedal, not let up. Trying to get the three count and walk away with the upset. <laughs> Don't put it past Indy. As we mentioned, her and Candice, former tag team champions, not just here on the main roster, but also down in NXT. 
And even though India is yet to really break out on her own and have that big singles opportunity, tonight could be the night that changes the trajectory of Indy Hartwell's SmackDown career. As we always discuss here on SmackDown, one win can change your momentum, change the course of your career forever. Wins and losses matter around these parts. It's all about getting your hand raised. And a win for Indy tonight can absolutely put her in line for a shot at championship gold. Shayna Baszler's down. Shayna Baszler may be out. And Indy Hartwell not going for the cover just yet after she inflicted some big time damage at ringside. She's going to elect to inflict some more punishment on the WWE Women's Champion. Going back out to the ropes. Could be eyeing up Shayna Baszler for yet another drop kick. Or wait a minute. Oh my goodness. Beautiful agility out of Indy Hartwell. Springboard drop kick. Damn near went coast to coast, right on the heart of the champion. And a kick out by Baszler, but you gotta believe if Indy wasn't down for a moment, if she was gonna be able to capitalize immediately off that maneuver that she may have kept down Shayna Baszler. Unfortunately, not to be. And now Baszler, you feel a sense of urgency in the WWE Women's Champion's attitude right now. Man, Indy Hartwell is bringing the fight to the champion tonight. You gotta believe Candice LeRae gave Indy some pointers coming into this matchup on how to keep down the leader of the Queen's Army, Army herself. Shayna Baszler just trying to get back into this matchup right now. Can't believe I'm saying it, but it almost feels like the WWE Women's Champion is the one fighting the uphill battle. Nonetheless, Indy Hartwell has given this match her all tonight, but will she be able to come out on the other end with her head raised high in victory? Remains to be seen, and Baszler, oh man! Shayna's got so many vicious strikes in her arsenal, just like that knee in the corner. Indy Hartwell might have gave this match all she had. She might have emptied the tank doing so as Baszler, face first off the canvas, goes the opposer and into the cover. And not just yet, Indy Hartwell gets the shoulder up. Win, lose, or draw, we can easily tell you that Indy Hartwell came prepared tonight, did her homework on the champion, and is fighting well more of a battle than she did a number of months ago with those several losses to Baszler. Clearly seeing the improvement in Indy Hartwell tonight, but can it pay her dividends is the question. Shayna Baszler's got to start being frustrated here. Indy has inflicted a lot of punishment throughout this matchup, and Shayna hasn't been able to put Indy away. And that spin-out maneuver has definitely gotten Shayna Baszler some victories in the past. We've seen it firsthand. But Indy Hartwell was able to survive it tonight, and you see Shayna sending Indy Hartwell to the outside here. Could be looking for a count-out victory, or could just be looking to send a message to Candice LeRae. The same way she beat Candice a few months ago, via the countout, to retain the championship. Same rules apply. Shayna could easily utilize the countout at no mercy, or she can wait in the wind and strike when she wants. A spear to the rib cage. Indy Hartwell's gotta be gasping for air. And if she's not right now, she may be in a moment because the Karafuda clutch is locked in tight and Indy Hartwell's got nowhere to go and a tap out right in front of the number one contender. A display of resilience and a display of toughness by the ever so dominant WWE Women's Champion, the Queen of Spades, Shayna Baszler, continues to ride a wave of momentum, but will it all come crashing down in eight nights at no mercy? Here is your winner, the Queen of Spades, Shayna Baszler. A great effort by Indy Hartwell tonight, but the victory was not to be. Shayna Baszler continues her dominance, but will that be the same result when she meets the Poison Pixie Candice LeRae one-on-one -on -one for the WWE Women's title?
We want to take you back to last week on SmackDown. We were in the midst of a number one contenders match to the world title between AJ Styles and Randy Orton. When Austin Theory rushed the ring, ambushed both competitors, leading to a double disqualification, no contest, no winner, and no number one contender decided. However, Austin Theory left SmackDown last, last week, the only man still standing after an eight town down to Randy Orton and leaving AJ Styles' body laying right next to the Viper. Austin Theory has been getting a lot of blood on his hands. I hope he knows what he's doing. Whatever's going through the mind of Austin Theory, there better be an M.O. Nonetheless, Theory set for action tonight, no longer against Edge, but against the phenomenal AJ Styles. The following contest is scheduled for one fall. Making his way to the ring from Atlanta, Georgia, weighing in at 220 pounds. Austin Theory! Originally, we were going to see Austin Theory versus the Rated R Superstar Edge tonight. That is no longer in the cards as Austin Theory ambushed Edge just earlier tonight as SmackDown was going on the air, sending him through a table down to the concrete in the backstage area. Edge deemed unable to compete tonight. I'm sure we'll get Theory and Edge running things back in the near future, especially after the ambush by Theory but a lot of bad blood, as we just mentioned, on Austin Theory's hands. The ambush last week, interrupting the number one contenders match between Styles and Orton, laying out Edge earlier tonight. Austin Theory has come unhinged ever since he failed to win the world championship at SummerSlam. And whatever is the mindset of Austin Theory, I'll say it simply, he better know what he's doing because he is pissing off a lot of the All-Stars in the blue brand locker room, and he may just rue the day that he decided to do it. Well, we've yet to hear news on who is truly going to be the number one contender for Drew McIntyre's World Heavyweight Championship eight nights from tonight at No Mercy. We know the championship is going to be on the line. Who's going to be standing across from McIntyre remains to be seen. Nonetheless, AJ Styles, Randy Orton, their opportunity seemingly going up in smoke last week after Austin Theory led to that matchup becoming a no contest. Remains to be seen, no number one contendership on the line tonight. Simply bad blood looking to be settled between the phenomenal AJ Styles and the young star from A-Town, Austin Theory. Regardless of all the turmoil as it's been in the SmackDown locker room regarding the World Heavyweight Championship picture, this is a great main event with two extraordinary talents with a lot of history between Theory and Styles. Remember, it was just a few months ago that Austin Theory defeated AJ Styles in the semi-final matchup in the King of the Ring tournament, a tournament Theory went on to win, which then awarded him that World Championship match with Drew McIntyre at SummerSlam. Theory came up short at the biggest party of the summer, hence possibly the reason he has just been absolutely causing turmoil the last two weeks. Nonetheless, Theory and Styles one-on-one, -on -one, and I'm sure Edge is still somewhere in this building, not able to compete, but keeping his eyes on Austin Theory. Fired up, they're waiting to get his hands on the young man after being put through a table earlier tonight here in Providence. More amazing to be seeing what is going to happen, but again, ladies and gentlemen, it is next Saturday night, the 16th. We'll be live at 5 p.m. Eastern time for the SmackDown exclusive live premiere event, No Mercy. Of course, that's coming up at 5 p.m., but just two hours prior will be week five of the Cruiserweight Classic. We'll be kicking off the quarterfinals next Saturday as well. And then coming up on Sunday night, the 17th, the Raw exclusive live premiere event from Chicago. No mercy, or excuse me, Unforgiven. It's going to be a busy weekend next week. Cruiserweight Classic, No Mercy, Unforgiven. Live premiere after live premiere. You're not going to want to miss a second of the action. Nonetheless, focusing in on the action at hand tonight, here tonight in Providence, Rhode Island, Austin Theory, the phenomenal AJ Styles. Styles taking down Theory. Classic maneuver in the arsenal of Styles there. We're gonna get some payback for Austin Theory laying him out seven nights ago in the middle of that squared circle, right next to the man he was hoping to defeat in the Apex Predator, Randy Orton. 
Austin Theory's making a lot of enemies as of late. Drew McIntyre, Edge, AJ Styles, Randy Orton. Theory better know what he's doing. Better be confident in his talents so that he can survive any and all fights that may come his way. But meanwhile, Styles, here we go, starting to pick up steam. What a Pele. Down goes Austin Theory. And AJ into the cover, looking for the victory. Tonight in Rhode Island, not just yet. Great move by AJ Styles, starting to build momentum in this contest. AJ with a little extra pep in his step tonight. A little extra fire in the belly of the phenomenal AJ Styles after what happened last week. And I'm sure Styles still looks at this matchup as a chance to prove himself worthy of becoming the number one contender to the World Heavyweight title. Or remains to be seen who is going to be inside the squared circle with Drew McIntyre next Saturday at No Mercy. But right now, Styles is all over Austin Theory. And Theory better be counting his lucky stars, hoping that he's going to have a chance to get back into this matchup. AJ Styles left him in a window open for opportunity there, but Theory not able to capitalize. He's down and out, but Styles went for the frog splash, does not pay him dividends, and now Austin Theory, same maneuver he used to lay out Styles last week, trails him up and drops him on the knee. It goes for the cover, but it's only a two. AJ Styles gets the shoulder up as the main event here in SmackDown continues. Austin Theory changing the tides after a misstep by Styles. Now sending him up and over the top rope. Styles down and out on the... Oh, wait a minute! The rated R superstar, Edge, is in the ring! Well, Edge unable to compete tonight, but Edge gonna disobey doctor's orders. This isn't a match, but Edge is coming for his payback against Austin Theory. Austin Theory, well, we just said it a few moments ago, probably gonna rue the day. He pissed off talent after talent. Edge sending Theory. Oh, wait a minute. But Randy Orton's now in the ring. What the hell is going on? Austin Theory was just battling AJ Styles moments ago. Then Edge hit the ring, attacked Austin Theory for the ambush earlier tonight, but now Randy Orton's out here, and my goodness, well-documented issues between Edge and Orton. These two men hot off the heels of a one-on-one -on -one match at SummerSlam a few weeks ago, where Randy Orton punt kicked Edge in the head for victory. But now whatever the hell is going on, things are breaking down. Tensions are rotting at an all-time high in the SmackDown locker room. Every single one of these egos wants their chance at the World Heavyweight title and Drew McIntyre. Well, clearly our main event getting thrown out. AJ Styles is laid out. Austin Theory, I think he made his way through the crowd. He got the hell out of Dodge. But now Orton and Edge are battling here at ringside. This is not a match, ladies and gentlemen. The main event has gone up in smoke two weeks in a damn row. And now Randy Orton's got a kendo stick for completely unnecessary reasons. And he's ambushed in the rib cage of the rated R superstar. Which is probably already reeling in pain after Edge was put through the table earlier tonight in the backstage area. We need to get some help out here. We need staff, we need referees, we need security. We may need to empty the whole damn locker room to get all these superstars to just follow some damn orders one week. Edge is getting his ass kicked by the kendo stick, but trying to come unglued here, trying to even out this brawl with Randy Orton. I don't know what the hell is going on. We need to get this situation under hand. Absolute chaos and anarchy on display here tonight in Providence, Rhode Island. Randy Orton's le Randy Orton leaving Edge, leaving through the crowd. I, I got no answers, ladies and gentlemen. I have no idea what is going on. We are eight nights away from No Mercy. That's a SmackDown exclusive live event. Everybody wanted to see their name on the marquee, and tensions are riding at an all-time high. And now Edge chasing after Orton. Things are breaking down in the middle of Providence, Rhode Island. We have got a Pier 6 brawl in similar concrete that Edge felt earlier tonight. This is not good for either man, but no way Edge is brawling at 100% right now. Oh my goodness, Edge power bomb to Randy Orton on the concrete. Holy hell. And now he's got that chair. Randy Orton trying to avoid it, and he does. 
This is absolute chaos and anarchy is the only answer I got right now, ladies and gentlemen. Wait a minute, RKO on the concrete. You have got to be kidding me. We need some help out here, and we need to get this situation under control. God damn it. Face on when I chase like that, yeah, I play so strong with a knife in the back. I'm a swing home run like a baseball bat. Gonna see me rise if you hate on that. I don't play both sides, doing me no cap. I'm a rapper.